Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This channel is all about my indoor worm farm. And if you guys are looking for a community that loves to support each other so we can all be more successful worm farmers, you are in the right place. Today we're going to be looking in on my red wigglers that are in my DIY stacked bin, which is each layer is 10 gallons or 38 liters. Last check-in was about four week, weeks ago. We saw a bit of springtails and the top was a bit dry, which it continues to be dry. Last time we fed in the middle and on the top with celery, peppers, and pineapple. Today's topic is going to be, what is the best environment for your worm bin? So as I'm going through my red wigglers, we're going to kind of talk about the different kind of environments that your house may have. And is it okay for your worms? And also, do you need to change something? So this type of worm, the red wiggler, which is what is in this bin, lives in the top few layers of the soil and mostly in between the leaves that are laying on the ground from a previous fall. So it's not typically a super wet media that they're living in because the top gets more evaporation and, you know, the, basically the worms live right there underneath the top layer. So it is moist, but it is not sopping wet. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we did last time. I know that we fed uh, some tulips, which it looks like all of the tulips and the rutabaga and everything we put on top is gone with the exception of the stems. But let's dig down and have a look and see what we have in the way of leftover food. I'm not seeing anything yet. The moisture in this bin is exactly how I would want it. It's very crumbly, but it's not dry. You can kind of make a little bit of a ball with it, but then it crumbles right back away. And for the red wigglers, that is a completely appropriate moisture to be in. Now, if you are, oh, yay, look, avocado tree growing. All right, we'll put him aside and put him in a pot. So if you have red wigglers and this is the kind of moisture that you have, this is completely appropriate for these worms. However, I will say that if you are trying to make your worms breed more, you are going to want a higher amount of moisture in the 80 to 90 percent range, which as opposed to this moisture, which crumbles apart very quickly, if you were at 80 or 90 percent moisture, that clump would stay and hold in your hand even if you tried to break it apart. That would be the kind of moisture that you're looking for. Woohoo! Make that two avocado trees. You guys are on a roll in here. All right, I'm not seeing any of the food that we put in. It has been about four weeks since they have been fed, so it's not surprising that this bin does not have any food left except for the avocado pits that take a very long time. Okay, so now that this has been completely evaluated, let's look at the next layer down. Layer number two. Now this layer actually does stay quite a bit more moist than the upper layer because the moisture stays constant and it doesn't evaporate. These are pure castings here on the top. No evaporation, no change in moisture, these worms down here probably breed at a much higher rate than the ones on the top layer that are basically constantly drying out. Okay, so here are my little risers that I've been putting in. These help the bin from compressing and making the area um, very compressed and hard for the worms to move out. But I'm going to move those aside for a moment so that we can look in because we did feed on this level. We gave them some pineapple, some peppers, and some celery. So we're going to look and see if there is anything left. I expect to find something of the pineapple left because that is truly a long-term food and I think that's what this is. I'm seeing a little bit of the, the crown that's left, but I don't see anything left of the peppers. So as moisture goes, this one is much, much more moist. See, it's holding its shape even though I'm kind of touching it. This is a better moisture if you're looking to breed worms in as opposed to the moisture that was on the top. Let's see if we got a worm ball here in the avocado shell. Not sure why they like to usually hang out in there, but they do. Okay. 
So these guys are looking good. I can still see that there's bedding left in here, recognizable cardboard bits. So these guys do not need any more bedding at the moment. Everything smells just like dirt. You know, kind of a fresh forest after a rain kind of a smell. No weird food smell, so everything looks good on this level. Okay, let's look at the next level down. All right, here we are on the lowest level of the worm bin, and this part actually stays the wettest. Sometimes I do have to add more, more bedding to this level just to keep it from being sopping wet and going aerobic. I also, because, oh wow, look at the springtails. I don't know if you can see that, I'll try and hold still. But those little white dots are the shredders of the group. They're gonna take that larger food down such as the avocado shells and peels and also the cardboard and make it available for the worms. Although I find them annoying and kind of creepy, they are actually friends in the worm bin. So we see a little bit of a pineapple crown there. But other than that, I'm not really seeing anything that needs any help. It is getting a little wet. I'm willing to bet that next time that we probably will have to take some of this material from the bottom and move it to the top and vice versa so that the moisture can stay constant. But these guys are looking good. They've got a lot of bedding left over and they also have, which is their food, they also get the drippings from the food above. So looking at also another environmental factor that you find in your worm bins, temperature. So these red wigglers are good for probably the most broad range of temperature of any of the worms that I keep. These little guys will keep on eating and keep making castings for you all the way down to a near freezing temperature. And they don't slow down until it gets to be about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. I will put the Celsius next to that. So red wigglers are the best at keeping, keeping working at all temperatures. If you were to have blue worms, for instance, those worms will be better at working at higher temperatures in the 70 to 90 degree Fahrenheit range. And the European night crawlers are a little bit more like the red wigglers where they're pretty good from freezing to about 80 degrees. They don't tolerate the heat as well. And if you have African night crawlers, they're even more picky about the temperature, anything below 70 degrees, and they probably will not be breeding or eating very well for you. So that is why my African night crawlers stay on the same level as the people so that they have the same access to temperature that I do. In fact, they're even a little bit more spoiled than that and they get a heating pad for the winter to make sure that their heating needs are met because they are a tropical worm. All right, these guys look good. I am going to put the second level back on. Okay, we've got the second level back on here. I am going to move everything over and make room for their new feeding. I'm gonna put their old food back in the same place so we can find it all for the next time. And I am going to give them a little bit of bedding because if you look at the castings here, I'm not seeing a lot of the bedding that's very recognizable. So I'm going to give them a little bit of bedding with their new food. Okay, we'll reserve half of that. And then these guys are going to get some cabbage here. We're going to put the cabbage and the stinky stuff down low and we will feed the next layer up the stuff that doesn't smell as bad or attract, attract pests. So we've got cabbage here, some tea bags, some lettuce, and some apple cores. Since it's getting warmer, they do eat faster, so that is why we're giving them a little heavier of a feeding than we have lately. And we'll put the top back on. Okay, here we are back up at the top. And we're going to feed on this opposite side over here from what we fed on the middle layer so that it can drip down evenly and give some nice stuff to the worms on the bottom. So I am going to bury some of this super dry bedding down here so the worms can get started on it and then they're going to get a nice feeding here. So the last topic that I wanted to talk about in the worm bins is pH and I have had quite a few questions lately about I've had quite a few questions about pH lately 
and I've seen a lot of questions in the different forums about pH and some people were desperate to try and keep it at uh, absolutely neutral pH and that's not necessary not at all you don't want the bin to be super low pH like you know coke or something you know any sort of soda that the pH reads about two and a half but when you're looking at your soil in your own backyard people with pine trees and whatnot have much lower pH of their soil and the worms do just fine so you don't need to be real concerned about the pH. Now I'm putting in some mango and some banana and some other random frozen vegetables here. Now it is possible that the fruit will sort of ferment before it breaks down, thus leading to a slightly more acidic area, but it's not a problem. I see worms curled up inside of limes, lemons, pineapple, everything that is super acidic, and it doesn't seem to bother them. The range of pH that is good for worms is a lot more broad than you think. Worms can live down to four and a half and up to almost nine pH, and they are gonna be just fine. So although we do add eggshell and whatnot for grit and for balancing the pH in the bin, it's really not as necessary, according to the textbooks that I've been reading, to worry about it all that much. It's not worth uh, giving yourself gray hair to worry about the pH of your worm bins. If you like the DIY system or want to see more of my Red Wiggler bins, I do have a playlist I can put right over there. And if you're interested in something else, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right over there. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.